Hello and welcome to Mathemafia. Are you guys ready for this quiz? Ready? So let me tell you one thing that for every question there can be more than one correct answer, right? So before we start this quiz, let's do a very simple activity. Identify which of the following are rational numbers and which are irrational numbers. Okay, so this is a very simple activity, so I am going to do it very quickly for you. So square root 2. So square root 2 means any prime number. The square root of any prime number is always irrational. 3.4. So if the decimal part is terminating, then definitely it is a rational number. 7.1111111 infinitely many ones, but the decimal part is repeating so this is also a rational number pi pi is a very good irrational number we all know that square root 3 again square root of any prime number so that will go to irrational numbers square root 4 square root 4 means it's 2 so 2 is a rational number and then 0 0 is definitely an integer and all integers are rational numbers right so here is the result. So let's now start the very first question. Given positive integers a and b, there exist unique integers q and r satisfying. So there are three options and I'm going to give you 10 seconds to solve it. And the correct answer is option A, that is A is equal to BQ plus R, where 0 is less than equal to R is less than B. And this is also known as Euclid's division lemma, right? Let's go to the next question. Every positive integer can be written in the form 2Q or 2Q plus 1, 3Q or 3Q plus 1 or 3Q plus 2, 4q or 4q plus 1 or 4q plus 2 or 4q plus 3 or all of the above. And the answer is option D. Now do one thing, take a number say 24 and try to solve it yourself. You will get it if you did not get it right right prime factorization of a natural number is not unique so is it true or false so i'm not going to give you 10 seconds to solve it okay so its answer is it's false why false for example take a number so 18 so 18 can be written as 2 into 3 into 3 or 3 into 2 into 3 or 3 into 3 into 2 okay so the order can be different but it has three prime numbers means three prime factors 2 3 3 that's it right next question for any two positive integers a and b the hcf of a and b multiplied by the lcm of a and b is equal to the product of a and b is it true or false? No extra 10 seconds to solve it because it's very simple and the answer is true. The answer is true. Now do one thing, take any two numbers, find HCF, find LCM and try to verify it. Okay? 0 0.1010010000 and so on. So every time an extra zero is being added so this number is a rational number or an irrational number so this number is an irrational number the reason is that it has a decimal part which is unending non-terminating because there are three dots in the end and it is non-repeating as well so if the decimal part is non-repeating non-terminating then the number is irrational number Right? Next question. If A is an irrational number, then A square is also an irrational number. No extra 10 seconds for this. 
Just solve it quickly. Is it true or false? It's false. It's false. So let me give you one example. For example, square root 2. Square root 2 is an irrational number, but its square is 2 and 2 is a rational number, right? So now we have a similar question. It says, sum of any two irrational numbers is always irrational. Is it true or false? True or false? True or false? It's false. It's false again. So let me give you two examples. For example, square root 2, it's an irrational number. Minus square root 2, that's also an irrational number. But when we add these two numbers, we get 0. And 0 is what? 0 is a rational number. Similarly, 7 plus square root 2, irrational number. 7 minus square root 2, irrational number. But their sum is 14, which is a rational number. Okay? Let's move to the next one. So this one is very, very interesting. So read it very carefully, okay? Which of the following is true? For any two positive integers, A and B. Option A, GCD of A and B divides LCM of A and B. Number B, LCM divides GCD. And number C, HCF divides LCM. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds for this one. So the answer is A and C. Why? Because HCF is also known as GCD. HCF and GCD is one and the same thing, right? So this one is very interesting. So think about it very carefully. So this says product of three consecutive positive integers is always divisible by two, three, six, all of the above or none of the above. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds to think about it and your time starts now. So it's all of the above means the number is divisible by 2, 3 and 6. Why so? Just do one thing. Take any three consecutive positive integers and see it yourself. Why is it so? Okay, let's move to the next one. Okay, what do we have here? If for two positive integers, two positive integers A and B, GCD of the numbers is equal to LCM of these two numbers, then A and B are co-prime, A is greater than B, B is greater than A, or A is equal to B. Think about it, your time starts now. Isn't that obvious? If GCD and LCM are equal, that means the numbers are equal. So if you are not able to get it, then you need to get it. Okay, learn more about it. Good, let's move to the next question. For any three positive integers, now we have three positive integers, A, B and C, following is always true that the GCD of ABC multiplied by the LCM of ABC is equal to the product of A, B and C. Is it always true? Is it always true? No, this is not true. This is false. So just do one thing. Take three positive integers, find the GCD, LCM and try to verify it. You will come to know about it. Okay. If A is any non-zero integer, non-zero integer and B and C are any two integers and A divides B, A divides C, so A divides both B and C, then which of the following is true? Option A, A divides B plus C, option B, A divides B minus C, option C, a divides B into C and option D all of the above. So now again I am going to give you 10 seconds to solve it. And the answer is all of the above. 
ओके सो डू वन थिंग टेक थ्री नंबर विच सेटिस्फाई दैट ए डिवाइड बी एंड ए डिवाइड सी एंड देन यू कैन वेरीफाई इट ओके लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन If a and c are any two non-zero integers, and b is any integer, and a into c divides b into c, then which of the following is true? B divides a, c divides b, or a divides b, or none of the above. So you have ten seconds. So the correct answer is A divides B. Try it yourself. You will get it. So this question and the next question are my favorite question in this quiz. So this question says for any positive integer n. So for any positive integer n, n square minus n whole square is always divisible by three, four, six, or all of the above. so i am going to give you 10 seconds to solve it it's not that difficult okay so i am giving you some extra time while i am speaking and now you are going to get 10 more extra seconds and the answer is 4 why see n square minus n it can be written as n into n minus 1 means two consecutive integers so two consecutive integers means one is an even number so it means n into n minus 1 so this product is divisible by 2 and its square will be divisible by 4 so one more similar interesting question is coming on your screen and here you go for any positive integer n n cube minus n is always divisible by 2 3 6 or none of the above so this is again a similar question so the hint is that you have to factorize and then you should solve it okay so i'm going to give you 10 seconds to solve it <laughs> the answer is 2 3 and 6 there are three correct answers i deliberately did not give all of the above option this time i just wanted to have fun okay okay let's now understand it why is it 2 3 and 6 see n q minus n can be written as n into n square minus 1 and further n square minus 1 can be written as n minus 1 into n plus 1 so you can see that it is actually the product of three consecutive integers so it is the same question that we solved earlier as well and the product of three consecutive integers is always divisible by 2 3 and if it is divisible by 2 and 3 obviously it will be divisible by 6 as well right let's move to the next one which of the following theorem states let p be a prime number and a be a positive integer If p divides a square, then p divides a. Is it Euclid's lemma, or remainder's theorem, or factor theorem, or fundamental theorem of arithmetic? So take ten seconds to think about it. and the correct answer is that this is fundamental theorem of arithmetic which of the following rational numbers rational numbers have terminating decimal part so you have four options and more than one can be correct so think about it take your time and then i will let you know So the correct answer is B, C, and D, and there is a pattern between these. I have not solved it. Just by looking at looking at these answers, you can quickly tell whether these numbers have a terminating decimal part or not. 
so there is a theorem that we studied earlier and it says that if x is any rational number x is any rational number means it is of the form p by q where p and q are co prime and q means the denominator is of the form 2 to the power n into 5 to the power m where n and m are non negative integers okay non negative means it can be 0 1 2 3 4 then the decimal expansion of x always terminates now using this theorem you can quickly look at the denominator and you can tell whether the decimal part of the rational number will terminate or not for example 8 8 can be written as 2 to the power 3 125 125 can be written as 5 to the power 3 right and for the last option it is already 2 to the power 7 into 5 to the power 8 so that's already in the form 2 to the power n into 5 to the power m right so with this question we are done with all the questions let's now finish it with one simple activity so ready for the activity it's actually the definition of rational numbers nothing else it says a rational number can be written in the form p by q where p and q are dash integers and q is dash so p and q are p and q are dash integers co prime so we will put co prime over here and q is what non zero so let's put non zero over here why non zero because denominator cannot be zero if the denominator is zero then the number is undefined right so we can check it as well well done so we did well in this quiz i mean you did well in this quiz you did well right ah oh, thank god so finally do one thing if you like this quiz then share it with your classmates and your friends and do let me know how did you do in this quiz.